We've got a nice little number theory problem today. So we want to count up how many pairs of natural numbers m and n satisfy two conditions. The first condition is 1 is less than or equal to m, which is less than or equal to n, which is less than or equal to 1,000. And the second condition is that m squared plus n squared is a multiple of 121. So in other words, it's equal to 121 times k, where k is some other natural number. So maybe the first thing that we should probably notice is that 121 is a prime squared. It's actually 11 squared. But then that helps us quite a bit because now we can see that m squared plus n squared is not just a multiple of 121, but it's a multiple of 11. So we can write this as 11 times a new natural number, maybe we'll call that L. But then being equal to a multiple of 11 is the same thing as being congruent to zero modulo 11. And using the notion of congruence modulo 11 is gonna actually help us make some calculations pretty nicely. And that's because only certain numbers are perfect squares mod 11. Now we wanna answer the question, well, which numbers are perfect squares mod 11? Sometimes these are called quadratic residues. And we can answer that question just by making a quick chart. So let's say we're going to make that chart. Let's say we have a, and then we have a squared mod 11. And let's recall that reducing mod 11 is the same thing as dividing by 11 and keeping the remainder. So since we're dividing by 11 and keeping the remainder, we only need to consider remainders between 0 and 10. So that means our values of a need to be 0, 1, 2, 10. That's going to give us all possible values of a squared mod 11. Okay, so notice if we square 0, we clearly get 0. If we square 1, we're going to get 1. If we square 2, we'll get 4. 3, we'll get 9. If we square 4, we will get 16 but reducing that mod 11 will get 5. If we square 5, we'll get 25, but reducing that mod 11 will get 3, because 25 is 3 more than 22, which is a multiple of 11. Then if we square 6, we'll get 36, but that's 3 more than 33, which is a multiple of 11. So we get 3 here, and in fact, you can check that we'll get 5, 9, 4, 1 going down this way. Notice, noticing this, we see that the only perfect squares are 0, 1, 4, 9, 5, and 3. We're not looking for perfect squares. We're looking for sums of perfect squares. So our question is not what are the perfect squares, but our question is how can we take sums of perfect squares and get something that is congruent to 0 mod 11. But that means we want to look at all the ways that we can take pairs of numbers from this list, add them up, and get a multiple of 11. But there's only one way to do that, and that is if each of the numbers from this list is 0. Notice any other pairing will not give us a multiple of 11. 1 plus 4 is 5, that's not a multiple of 11. 9 plus 3 is 12, that's not a multiple of 11. The only way to get a multiple of 11 is with 0. 0 plus 0, which is 0 times 11. So let's summarize that over here. So if m squared plus n squared is congruent to 0 mod 11, then m squared is congruent to 0 mod 11, and n squared is also congruent to 0 modulo 11. And that's just from noticing what we did with this list over here. But if m squared is a multiple of 11, and 11 is prime, that means that m is also a multiple of 11. In other words, m is congruent to 0 modulo 11. And also, n is congruent to 0 mod 11. In other words, n and m are both multiples of 11. So let's maybe bring that fact over here, and then we'll finish it off. So on the last board, we determined that m and n were both congruent to 0 mod 11, but that's equivalent to saying that m and n are both multiples of 11. Now, let's combine that with our first condition, which is that m and n are between 1 and 1,000, 
where they are ordered like this. So m is less than or equal to n. Okay, but notice we can make a nice triangle of possibilities satisfying this first condition. So maybe we would start with 11 comma 11. So notice here m would be 11 and n would be 11. And then our next possibility would be 11, 22, and then 22, 22. So that would be when n is two times 11, whereas this first row is when n is one times 11. Our next possibility will be 11, 33, 22, 33, then finally 33, 33. Okay, so now let's take that all the way down to our last possibility. And our last possibility will be the closest multiple of 11 to 1,000, which is 990. So here we have 11, 990, 22, 990, all the way up to 990, 990. Now the question is, how many elements are on each of these rows? So notice we've got one ordered pair on this row. We have two ordered pairs on this row. We have three ordered pairs on this row. All the way down to here, we have 990 ordered pairs on the final row. Okay, so all together, how many ordered pairs are there? Well, there's one ordered pair from the first row, two from the second row, third, three from the third row, up to 90 from the 90th row. But there's a well-known closed form for numbers like that. That's something called a triangular number, and the closed form is equal to 90 times 91 over 2. In other words, this is 45 times 91. Those are the number of possibilities that satisfy this first condition. Now we just have to check that all of those possibilities satisfy this second condition. But because of the way we arrived here, we see that all of these ordered pairs automatically satisfy this second condition. So we could check that really quick if we wanted to. Notice if m and n comes from this list, then that means that m equals 11 times a, and n is equal to 11 times b, but that makes m squared plus n squared equal to 121 times a squared plus b squared. But that's most definitely a multiple of 121. So just to reiterate, we made this list of potential candidates for solutions, and we showed that they were all solutions meaning that the total number of solutions is this number 45 times 91. And that's a good place to stop.